So welcome to this uh, podcast on the um, Scrum Guide 2020. Um, it's not often that the Scrum Guide gets an update because the uh, old Scrum Guide was already pretty uh, succinct and clear to me as a PhD, but that's me. I'm just working with it a lot. Um, but now there's a new Scrum Guide out there. And even though the previous Scrum Guide was already pretty short, 16 to 19 pages, depending on your printer. Um, it's now even shorter. So there's been some drastic changes. And uh, we thought it'd be fun to reach across the pond to our friends in Britain, in the UK, and see uh, if we could still chat. And Zoom still works. So <laughs> Brexit the is still, are good. Uh, yeah. we're still <laughs> working across boundaries, <laughs> even uh, with Brexit. So. Hi, with me are Steve Traps, <laughs> Jasper Alblas, and Andy Hiles, all awesome PSCs, providing Scrum trainings all over the world. And uh, tonight we're just going to dig in a bit into these changes of the Scrum Guide and see what we'll find. And hopefully we'll learn some stuff, and you too. So uh, a very short round of introductions, because there may be people listening that are not familiar with these four awesome trainers we have here. Uh, Steve. Hi, uh, I'm Steve Traps. I'm based in the UK. I am a professional scrum trainer and a very active scrum master, uh, helping various different organizations understand the true power of scrum. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's awesome. Jasper. Yeah, my name is Jasper. I'm uh, based in the Netherlands. I've been PhD since 2018 working with a couple of organizations uh, that are undergoing agile transformations. Currently, the municipality of The Hague, um, also as a scrum master for, uh, for one team. And um, yeah, so scrum in practice and, and teaching it also a lot. I love it. Great to be here. Thanks. And Andy. Yeah, um, my name is Andy Hulls. I'm a professional scrum trainer from the UK. Um, I don't know what to say as an intro. <laughs> I was kind of like, I was listening to everyone else going, oh, yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> what do I do? I was also oh, Andy, remarking. You are interesting. I, I'm sure I am. Um, uh, I was also listening to Steve Traps and realizing how much he sounds like he should be on radio. <laughs> yeah, that's a very... Uh, apparently I've got the face for radio you, you so. definitely have um, <laughs> you do. <laughs> so yeah so, so my uh, my passion lies in product um, product management product ownership and uh, a lot in the Kanban space and flow I think is kind of where my, my passions lie um, obviously I like scrum <laughs> it's just scrum with flow is way better um, <laughs> much more fun right dig myself out of this hole help me out please <laughs> For people who want to know more about Andy, I think you have a podcast too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, this gets yeah. Sure. There, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we can we can link it in one way or another. But uh, I, I've got a series of YouTube uh, chats. Uh, actually, Steve's yeah. on there as well, um, uh, under the title of Agile Rocks, where we talk to um, not just PSCs. Actually, po talk to kind of most people in the community who are doing actually doing scrummy agile stuff, and we get them on, and we just have a general chat um just about them and their experience um and then get them to kind of talk about themselves a bit, lot more so it's kind of less about us and actually just kind of trying to give something back to the community that you know that just isn't out there at the moment so thank you for for giving the opportunity to promote that yeah we should because then if people watch that and listen to that they get a proper introduction of you uh, probably even though you're not talking <laughs> a lot um but we're trying to change that here. So for everyone that's listening, uh, now's your chance to hear Andy talk about stuff and have an opinion about stuff instead of just <laughs> being the host as a cop-out, uh, which is what I am. So um, I am uh, Sjoerd Kralendonk. I'm a PhD based in the Netherlands. Um, uh, I work, uh, uh, I think since less than a year, I've been working with um, Jasper and a few other uh, Dutch PSTs as uh, Scrum facilitators. Um, and uh, my regular daytime job is uh, a Scrum Master and Agile Coach at the Dutch Police, uh, where I work uh, with uh, teams that uh, research and uh, prevent and uh, uh, track uh, and investigate cybercrime. So that's a, a bit of a, diff a difference from the regular Scrum, but uh, we try. And um, we are always a bit aware of, you know, stuff that that, you know, 
goes about rules and stuff like that if we yes yes so within scrum facilitators i'm always the the one uh this is scrum police copyright, <laughs> so, uh, personal data and uh, gdpr stuff like that so that's pretty yeah, cool. I'm, I'm scrum anyway that's uh kind of what, also why i'm very interested in this uh, scrum guide updates because i think it uh, also provides even more uh, accessibility and guidance for people working in non-it uh, environments and still want to benefit from Scrum. So um, let's dig into it, right? Everybody ready? Let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah. So I referred to this already in the introduction. It's it's even less prescriptive, as uh, Ken uh, likes to, uh, to mention it. So what do you think of that? It's shorter. What gives? Yeah, it's dramatically shorter. You know, it's 13 pages now. Um, the and I, I, irrespective of the printer, I think. <laughs> um, which is a great line. It's good for the environment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 13 pages, they've taken a lot of things out of there. They've taken a lot of things out and clarified a lot of things as well. So uh, for me, it was uh, it's uh, really nice to see. Yeah, it's, it's quite a feat, I think, to to make it shorter and clearer. Like yeah. clarification yeah. for me is often talking more about it. That's also why I'm not Ken Schwaber, of course. So, so um, that was the that was the interesting thing that yeah, um, like shorter, meaning less. But actually, I was I was talking to somebody earlier on today. I think uh, around a you know related subject, and I, I was kind of saying how it's almost widened yet <laughs> it's really weird. It's widened yet narrowed the perspective. And what I mean by that is actually the true. Um, uh, intent of Scrum comes across a lot more, right? So, so I'm reading the language around, you know, why Scrum exists and now these changes which we'll come into in, in a, without kind of going too deep. But, but actually, you know, it, it opens it up for more, um, more applications. So, you know, like you know, you're saying you're working with cybercrime, but actually, you know, just outside of software. Um, but yet, you know, narrows the focus around. Look, this was the intention of Scrum, and it was it was this more open. And as Jasper said, uh, you know, it's like it's a framework, and it really opens it up to being a framework for me. Whereas I think before there were it, there were prescriptive things in there, and mm. you know, and it made it complicated, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, and some, it it makes it more uh, applicable in a lot of situations where there we were just joking about scrum policing, but there there's just a lot of things that you don't you know you you don't have to scrum police anymore. So I I just I read a really good example. Can I go into this already? Or, yeah, let's go. Time, right? Yeah. So so you know previously there's always something like you have to take something from your retrospective to the sprint backlog, right? Which could be a good thing because, you know, you need to take time to, take, to you know, incorporate improvements and stuff like that. Um, but when I see myself as a Scrum Master, uh, as team, like the, the team coach of the team as well, sometimes it's just having a really good, uh, really good conversation with your team that doesn't necessarily lead to product backlog items on your sprint or, uh, you know, and that that concrete, but it, it brings brings up space for for team improvement uh, on a deeper level, like on you know uh, below the surface, and that's yeah. something I really like in retrospectives. Is so mm -hmm. I'm that's one of the aspects what I really enjoy. Um, of course, it's always good to have tangible things, and you have to work on tangible things to improve. But also just, you know, if a team is stuck somewhere in, in, in the middle and you just have a fruitful conversation, which is really good. So, so there were a number of things like that um, yeah. that were previously really prescriptive, prescriptive and now just open up a lot of more space for even broader improvements, maybe. Yeah, yeah I think this uh, uh, also um, hopefully will uh, address some of the critiques Scrum has been getting sometimes. Um, as being the training wheels of Agile. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this <laughs> comment sometimes. But, uh, uh, Steve, I see you smiling. Uh, uh, well, what does this comment do with you? Training wheels of Agile. Uh, what people call Scrum that. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that. Oh, people start doing Scrum and then they move on to something else. It's like almost like a progression, of, you know, going through the school or whatever of Agile. 
Mm. Okay, well, you really want to start Scrum, but the end goal is over there when you're doing whatever. Um, and this is, you know, this is uh, not true. <laughs> There's highly performant teams using Scrum. And if you can get flow in there as well, for, you know, for Andy, uh, that's really <laughs> good as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's, yeah, training school for Agile. No, it's not. It's, it's a powerful framework in which we can use in complex uh, worlds. And moving, um, you know, the, removing the IT language, I think is going to open up into other areas. I mean, we've all helped uh, other organizations that are not really seen as IT areas. And it's always like, oh, yeah, but we're not a software house. We're not a whatever. We're a, it's like, okay. Yeah, but you can use that. And when we say developer, it just means, you know, somebody that's developing the product, not a software engineer. Um, so it's a, it's a real shift away from the IT focus and taking out references to IT, I think is going to be a big bonus because it's, this, must it's, be, this must be like really good news for you, Stuart. How have you read this? Um, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Uh, I must say, I won't go into the, the um, particular challenges we have too deeply, but because I want to keep this discussion more focused on the Scrum Guide uh, in itself. But um, And I think the previous Scrum Guides uh, already had these sections explaining where Scrum was uh, being applied successfully already. So yeah. there was already some um, uh, some stuff that you could hook on to and uh, show, well, it's d done over there, so why couldn't we? Um, but the thing I like very much, um, and that's why I mentioned the training wheels before, is that being less prescriptive, having less of the, um, uh, this event should have these three questions uh, or, or language that uh, could be uh, read to imply that, because it didn't say you should do this, but mm. uh, you could do this. <laughs> but taking it out entirely, uh, and we're talking about the daily scrum here, of course, uh, means you, it opens up to... Um, various ways of uh, applying practices to reach the goal of these events of Scrum. Yeah. And this also means that you, as a Scrum master or uh, as a Scrum team, uh, you can tune the practices to the level of uh, self-organization or self-management as it's now called in the new Scrum guide. Um, and you can really, uh, uh, Scrum is not the training wheels anymore, right? So it's now the additional practices that you can put on or take off or tune uh, to make a team find their own balance. And I think that's, uh, um, that's one of the biggest wins that this uh, guide being less prescriptive is to me and will also be helpful in my, uh, my situation of being, not being an IT because the language is cleared up. Mm. And I have to say, and I, I, I'd like to give this to Andy if you, if you like, um, they're still describing developers, right? It's not, no development team anymore, but still developers. So, um, but maybe uh, this is a good moment to dig into the um, one team focused on one product aspect of the guide and uh, um, the language changes around that. And yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, for, yeah, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of big ones for me. Um, this is certainly on my list. Um, I don't know how you knew it was on my list, but this is certainly one of them on my list. Um, uh, the kind of this whole one team aspect that we are one unit together um, was, uh, was always kind of implied but never concrete you know it was it was uh, uh as steve's kind of aware of it i created a um an exercise which i would run in in the training the scrum training which which was all from the guide and I, it was a, there's a very long story behind this but i copied all the um all the references to the the roles and what they were meant to do out onto cards and then people would play a game around trying to match them and then i, I would always throw in the scrum team as a as a as a role right and, I, and then people go hang on how can we assign things to that to that role now when you look in the guide now actually the, there's a huge weight i mean uh, i've recreated this this exercise for for um, the new guide and the 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 weight used to be in the product owner and the scrum master is now way over into the scrum team as a collective um, and this kind of idea that there is just there's not development team and we have accountabilities not roles here um, we, again it's just like this subtly huge shift in language I do wonder how this is going to play in real life uh, mm -hmm. I, that is, I mean that's kind of you know I think on on you know this whole you know one team one unit i think that's that's common sense i think that's brilliant i don't see that being a problem 
Um, but I think that whole definition of now developer accountability, product owner account, as in accountability, you know, Scrum Master is account, and we'll come back. I, I really want to, there's a couple of things about Scrum Master I want to really pick up. Um, but I think there's, I wonder how that's going to play out and and um, how people are going to react, you know, whether we're going to, and what I mean by this is a lot of, um, a lot of companies structured their teams around roles. So there was a scrum master role, there's a product owner role, there was a development team role, perhaps or you're a developer or a lead developer, but now actually everyone's a developer. Right. So, so I, again, I wonder what the impl- the actual practical impl- impl- implementation and implications are. You know, whether we're going to see that trickle into organisations are actually going to start creating scrum teams. You know, and actually, yeah. you know, I think there will be positives, but I, I kind of I do wonder what 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 possibly could fall out of it. So, um, Steve or ja- Jasper, um, what kind of um, things do we see in organisations currently that we work with? Um, where they might struggle with the new accountabilities instead of very explicit roles, um, uh, like for instance in the governance or the uh, uh, hiring structures that they uh, they apply or stuff like that. Do you have problems there? Do you? I because I think there's a challenge there because the the role of the product owner, as described in the previous Chrome guide, is uh, already a, a very difficult one uh, to put into practice to, to really have a good product owner uh, caring about the product, maximizing value, you know, a bit vague sometimes also. So how do you make that concrete? And often I find it difficult in organizations to find people who want to dedicate their career. And maybe Andy, you, you focus also on the product owner role a lot. Um, you know, they want to do it part-time sometimes or, you know, uh, alongside another business uh, analyst role or coming from other roles. Um, so, you know, this might also be sort of a, a way to hold on to that instead of saying, you know, you really should have this product to understand for your product, which is, you know, it, it implies accountability, of course, is a big word as well. And it, it implies a lot. But maybe it's also sort of an escape, like, okay, so I can do this also alongside of all my other tasks. Are you you suggesting that um, we're going to have more of the, we do Scrum, but we don't do that, or we do a little bit of this because of the um, less prescriptive, people's interpretations are going to make this a little bit more, yeah, we kind of do Scrum, but we don't do that bit. Oh. There's a there's a big advantage in having a broader sense and less prescript being less prescriptive, mm-hmm. but it, yeah. it means also that there's going to be a lot more discussion around how are we going to mm-hmm. make this work, right? Mm-hmm. And how you can can convince people. Uh, so are we looking more towards the scrum master to actually step up a little bit here and say, you know, in the first opening lines. Um, Actually, sorry, I've got it in front of me. I should really reference it. The Scrum, uh, where is it? Uh, in a nutshell, Scrum requires a Scrum Master to foster an environment where, bang, straight away. Um, and if people are not doing that, then the Scrum Master, or they're, they're interpreting it slightly differently, or you know, the Scrum Master needs to potentially go, hey, that's a great idea. There's some benefits there. You could probably get a lot more benefit by doing X, Y, and Z. So the Scrum Master really comes into the, the heart of this a bit more is that that key player that um so, so I, think this is, I think this is where um i go back to that whole scrum team thing the hidden role the hidden role that's been in scrum right and um i want to see i really wish and would like and want to see organizations really embracing that team identity right we're creating a scrum team and that scrum team is focused you know, this one that focus on the product goal and the sprint goal. You know, and that's and that's what we're going after in the product backlog, and we're going to make sure we maximize the value that we're delivering. You know, r- you know, we have a scrum master who's who's now uh, and dig into that scrum master role. My God, there is so much language around that scrum master role. If people are, are confused about what a scrum master does after reading this guide, I would be really surprised, really, really surprised. As Steve said, like line two or whatever it is, you know, it's, it's one of the first lines. Yeah, the, the scrum master is there to foster an environment. 
you know, all around scrum. And if they're not doing that as their job, well, you know, you've now got something to measure your scrum masters against, you know, it's, it's clear as day. But, uh, but I think it, it's now an opportunity where um, organizations would say, yeah, we'll create a development team and we'll support them with this kind of vague product owner scrum master structure. No, right. Now we go and do scrum, right? Now, if you're going to take scrum seriously, you create a scrum team. And it looks like this and it has those accountabilities. You know, they're, they're, they're a little unit. And they almost, you know, I kind of imagine like this protected little bubble, right? And they are developing, you know, really good value. And that's how we, that's, when I, when I started, you know, I talked to the start around um, you know, kind of scrum being this kind of like, you know, simple, you know, kind of uh, narrow yet kind of wide and kind of more, more concrete in its nature. That for me is like the essence of it is like creating a, a unit to go and execute a, a task. Um, you know, and this is, you know, within that we have, you know, the, the rules of the game for scrum. Um, but yeah. I think the, you know, pulling on that hidden role for, for, for the scrum team. And, uh, I, you know, I will talk about the product goal and the sprint goal being really important, but, you know, um, I think organizations have an opportunity now to really go and look at that as a thing and go, actually, do you know what? We'll start creating scrum teams because that actually makes a lot more sense. Do you know what? Something's just occurred to me. I wonder how many people doing scrum at the moment, you know, pre-2020, they're in a scrum team, but they don't realize they're in a scrum team. They're part of a different unit and they happen to be using scrum as their framework or their choice of product development. But picking up a, a yes and from Andy, uh, you know, having that scrum team and organizations making it and going, hey, you are a scrum team. You're using scrum. It's almost opening people's eyes. I don't know if that's a bit too far to go. You're, you're part of us. You're a scrum team. Act like a scrum team. Here are the rules and here are the, what scrum, <laughs> scrum teams are accountable for. This is what we're expecting from you. You're not a part. <coughs> Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <coughs> you're right over there. I'd, I'd hand you a drink, but we're yeah, I think I was um, getting too enthusiastic about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely was. You know, you're not a sub team. You're part of this team. You're not a part of the development team. You're part of the team. And this team, the only team that there is, is the scrum team. And here yeah. are all your accountabilities. Off so you there's go. No separation. There's no separation between those roles. It's just, you know, one accountable team. I, th I think mm. the, the, it was uh, Gunther Verheye in his uh, book, The Pocket Guide, who always described the Scrum team as the atomary unit of Scrum. And it took me a while to realize what he meant. And I think this, thank you for showing it. And it's also the first print, I think. Uh, so it's a collector's item by now. Yeah. The first edition. <laughs> uh, so if, if you get it, the first edition is great, but the second edition is even greater. Uh, but it's not... Uh, tunes uh, for the new scrum guide so there might be a third edition soon you never know anyway um, the brilliance of it uh, the scrum team is the atomary unit and this new scrum guide brings that point uh, home very nicely uh, and I think I, mm. I do recognize what Steve's mentioning even in my own current uh, uh, coaching and uh, uh, scrum master role that having uh, uh, too much of an um, emphasis on the uh, separate roles of the uh, a scrum master, the product owner and the development team um, really can uh, uh, divide instead of unite. Um, we even had a, in our uh, community, uh, Jasper, recently a question of a, a learning scrum master. And it was an awesome question. Like, should I participate as a scrum master in the retrospective or should I just facilitate? And um, we explored the, the, the 2017 Scrum Guide uh, to, to, to look into that because the, the other one wasn't there yet. And uh, actually there's some language in the old Scrum Guide already uh, talking about uh, the retrospective as an event for the whole Scrum team. Mm -hmm. And it, nowhere it says uh, that the Scrum Master should only facilitate there, right? So um, there was already some language in the older guide uh, emphasizing the, the whole team approach, but it's more explicit. Um, and it also goes for, for some other stuff that's more explicit. I mean, Andy already called out like the product goal. Uh, there was never a product goal, but like having this list of things we uh, think we should build or uh, implement or add to our product uh, that had a certain goal, right? There, there was a thing that we're trying to do, but there was no mention of it in the Scrum Guide. And now, now it's there. And then 
Uh, it's, 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 it's just more explicit and shorter. Uh, it's, it's stay strange. I, what I like about it is punchy. It's punchy. yeah. 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 Uh, I'm reading it and, um, you know, when it talks about transparency, it's transparency enables inspection. Bang. Without inspection, inspection without transparency is misleading and wasteful. Bang. It's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's clear. It's yeah. less prescriptive and concise. It's just clear. Yeah. There's less yeah. interpretation there. Yeah. Um, I, and I think as a, somebody that lives within Scrum, it's nice to see. Yeah, I, I feel that uh, a lot of times the words I've been searching for when delivering a scrum training or trying to explain stuff to a team or uh, whatever, talking about scrum, the words I've been looking for are now finally written somehow. And it's strange because the previous scrum ride really wasn't, wasn't like in bad shape or something like that, but no. uh, it, it had evolved uh, over the years. Uh, um, and some stuff removed, some added, but I think this revision was so thorough in like really re, re, fully rewriting, I think, based on the purpose of stuff and really getting to that punchline for, for mm. everything there in there. It's really a change. You know, each of the events, it starts with bang, the purpose of yes. is this. You know, can the, I, the can um, I, can I pick product owner is accountable for this. Okay, fine. I, was gonna, I, I was gonna um pick up on something. You know, so the word commitment. Mm -hmm. Uh so commitment, gosh, like I don't know how many times in 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 uh uh in your training uh, you've come across people kind of saying, Oh, we, we commit to the sprint backlog. Right. So um and, and commitment was kind of uh you know a, a value, right? And so you know, we were we were uh, explaining commitment away and saying, well, you're committing to the sprint goal, not the, not the sprint backlog. And that was kind of like, but actually um, this edition's added commitment as a thing, right? And, it, and, it's, and it's, again, it's explicit. So we have mm. the sprint goal it has its own commitment path. Definition of done has its own commitment path. And, and you know, the product goal, this, this new thing that, that was probably, again, it's kind of one of those things that's probably there, uh, much like the values. The values were there for years, but nobody talked about them. And the product goal probably was there, but would, was never really talked about. Um, we now have that. Yeah, so that's actually, uh, it, that's a radical change, right? Because we had the, the values, Scrum values, we had the principles like the empiricism, and we had um, the uh, the three things uh, uh, like many religions. <laughs> 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 that were the the, the roles, uh, the artifacts, and the events. And now there's actually a fourth thing, or depending on how you count, a sixth thing. Uh, anyway, so and that's the commitments. <laughs> The commitments and uh, we talked about the protocol already that's really a new thing that's been added that's never been in there uh, but the commitments also uh, provide a home for the definition of done and the sprint goal mm. um, and this was also oh, 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 so frustrating uh, teaching scrum uh, to me so for me as a teacher it's much more easy but i'll leave it to you to talk about uh, what it does in practice because that's more harder uh, to explain i think um, but as a teacher i always have to say okay so there's uh, three core elements of Scrum. Uh, uh, it's the roles, it's the artifacts, it's the events, right? Those are the things. Oh yes, and there's this uh, list of stuff that's also important, but they're not roles, artifacts, or events. Yeah. Now let's get they to are, the, are they things. mandatory? Are they not mandatory? Yes, they're mandatory. Yes. But why are they not called mandatory? Yeah. So, and why is uh, <laughs> is the definition of done on an artifact? And then you have to uh, like. And I really had to guess, right? Because there was no um, uh, uh, explanation from Ken or Jeff about why this was so, or if they had explained it, it was always different from each other. Mm. And now uh, the definition of done is, is, is a commitment. It's a thing. So um, what oh, does and, it mean? And is that we have more... the sprint goal, the definition of yeah. done, and the product goal as commitments. Yeah, I mean, done is way more simple. Uh, I, 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 was, I was explaining this previously about how, I don't know whether it was one of, one of your um some i'll have to dig out the originator of the thread on slack but there was a there was an internal trainer question around done 
it was, it was like I can't remember how it was titled, but it was something like I don't know how to describe done. <laughs> and then it was, and then this whole thread that I've never, you know, it just went endless and endless. And somebody beautifully summarized it. But even the summary on done in the trainers network was. I, you could print it out and it'd be an A4, regardless of what pr printer you pick. Okay, it was one sheet <laughs> A4, but it was just like you know everyone's interpretation. Now it's basically saying you know the the moment uh, 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 an item, a product, product backlog item um, uh, reaches done, an increment is born. Well, you know, yeah. I'm kind of paraphrasing. I think that's kind of what it says in the guide, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's now just like really simple. You know, mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to, it doesn't, you know, and the, the accountability, yes, we need, you know, somebody needs to go and create it, but it's not overly complicated, whether it's there, whether it's not, you know, whether you, you know, whether the <laughs> the wind's blowing from the east, you know, whether you need to kind of, you know, create a definition of done. I mean, it's, it's just incredibly simple. And I think it goes back to this commitment thing, which is we never really talked we kind of we always implied professionalism coming with done and quality, but we're now saying it has to be yeah you have yeah. to you, you basically every increment commits to done which equals quality and that's you know simple yeah and it reaches both ways like you say because the moment uh, a, a backlog item gets done it's part of the increment mm -hmm. right so there's also no more discussion about uh oh well we have to wait until the sprint review and then we can release yeah. the new increments so scrum is slow but there is no undone anymore to explain yes. there <laughs> <laughs> oh no we'll still or is to, there we'll, we'll yeah. still have to explain it for sure yeah we'll start i mean the, the bit of language i i think i'd have liked to have seen but but again it may be over complicated <laughs> so the scaled guide um uh had in uh integrated as part of the like the definite you know so every increment uh every change should be um uh integrated um uh, as part of the definitely, you know, as like in terms of reaching done, the the whole thing's gone up my 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 brain for some reason. But but I liked that as a way of uh, just tuning done a little bit more for for more for people who are kind of working multiple teams, right? And I know this is meant to be simple and one team and all that kind of stuff. But actually, you know, how many people out there are using Scrum with one team? You know, one product, one team. You know, how many? Not a lot. Yeah. And maybe I'm, I'm wondering, maybe I'm picking your thoughts on this um, because I really like the product goal. Um, uh, it sort of gives you a sense of uh, purpose. It gives you a concrete way to embody your vision as a product owner also, but also to incorporate, you know, again, as a whole scrum team, you have this, this focus on this product. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we have a lot of teams who work, you know, multiple teams on one product. But also there are teams who, you know, develop and sustain multiple products. Um, so, you know, do we have one product goal for one product or, you know, yeah. is it I, more like I, I think it's the rules still apply, right? So it's one, one product owner, one product backlog, one product, yeah. one product goal. I mean, there could one be, goal. yeah, I mean, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> gosh, yeah, again, there's probably, I think this was the, this was the one that probably calls, calls the most fuss. I don't know the product goal, where does it live? You know, I, I yeah. think if you treat the product goal like the sprint goal, you know, it, it exists, it exists to create a direction for the team, you know, centered around the product. Because uh, like, I don't know your experience, but, but, it was it was difficult in at times to to coach teams to create good product goals. Uh, sorry, good sprint goals, because there wasn't a product vision or a product goal mm. that kind of you know never existed. So now we've got this thing that has to exist. You know, the product the product yeah. vision wasn't ever a thing. It was it was an it was one of these you know you ought to have one, but it's not you know it's not it's not a thing. But it's really, you know, it's like refinement. You ought to do it. Yeah, but it says, it says it's optional. It's 10% of our capacity, whatever that meant. Uh, that's gone, by the way. That's kind yes. of cool. Um, uh, but we've now got this product goal, right? And we've now got something to hold people kind of accountable, this commitment thing for me. So are we saying, or is the Scrum Guide saying, that a team should only ever be working on one product? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we are. Yes, and sure it says... Well, if you think about teams that, you know, you, okay, hey, folks, we're going to do Scrum, but you're going to have to support three products. 
okay, fine. Does that mean we have three product backlogs and how is the team going to work? Okay, well, you know, one thing way you could do is have one product backlog and that work gets fed through, but then does that mean you have to have a product goal per product? Yes, but the Scrum Guide says, and this is the bit that I've just been looking at, uh, and now I've lost it. <laughs> it lives within the product backlog. So this is a there's, a, there's something going on here. There's, yeah. how can you have multiple product goals in one product? Oh, that's because that's product A, that's product B. That, yeah. oh, hey, what's going on? Why are you complicated? So this is going to create a lot of conversation. <laughs> you know the answer to this. You know the answer. Come on, don't, don't. <laughs> you can't be serious, right? You know, it's, it, the, yes, can, right, okay. So Andy's rules of life, right? Can you, <laughs> should you? I, I, I don't know whether you, you guys have been introduced to my my three rules of life. One is, you know, can you, you know, two is, is should you? And three is, is it the right thing? You know, it's like, you know, can you have multiple uh, products, uh, teams working on multiple products? Yeah, sure. You know, uh, should you? well it's probably not the best idea you know is it the right thing to do no right it's it's like trying to bake three different cakes all at the same time for the same birthday party we're right? special andy we're special and we have to work this way you might be special i'm <laughs> <laughs> in the wrong ways yes i know okay yeah i am i am playing with you but that's yeah, what a lot of organizations are going to be saying is like well, hey yeah. this is this is team alpha and they look after six projects products um ooh, what are we doing let's not get into the <laughs> into i know i know i was a, a slip there but uh, yeah, pro yeah let, products it, it just what what occurs to me is you know if you encounter a team like this um of course I think we all agree, you know, uh, a scrum team should have one product backlog, you know, that's just out of the question that that's just, it's not out of the question. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> that's the way, you know, that's, that's just, a, that's the way you create focus. Um, if you have multiple products that you sustain and get you, you know, you, you work on um, and somehow in your organization, you can not split that up or not yet, maybe, or you're not in a mm -hmm. phase where you, or a state where you live, where you, you, you can do that. Um, if you look at a team and you just, you know, the team as not, not a scrum team, just a team. What, what is it that um, makes a team a team? It is that, you know, that common purpose that everybody works on, works towards. Mm. That has nothing to do with, even with scrum. It's just, if you have a team uh, with, all kind of people working on different things, then you're just colleagues, you're not a team. So, so a team needs a common goal, you're saying. Exactly, yeah. Like so that is the product goal. So, you know, work towards that if you're not, if you're not in that state yet, right? And then okay, I'll play nice now. Yeah, okay, good. To be in situations that you cannot apply this perfectly, uh, indeed. Um, and we've all seen them and we've all lived them, I, I think. Mm. But the Scrum Guide is actually quite clear. So I'm going to do something, uh, 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 and that's uh, called quote the Scrum Guide, and <laughs> to uh, uh, to help Steve out because he, he was looking in his notes. I saw, I saw that. And actually, it's uh, at the definition of the Scrum Team in the first um, uh, paragraph already. And um, the last sentence of the first paragraph is. Uh, the Scrum Team is a cohesive unit of professionals focused on one objective at a time, the product goal. So uh, not only it says the product goal, not a product goal, right? Which would be if there were multiple products and multiple product goals uh, uh, side by side, yeah. focusing on one product goal at a time. Uh, so you could do stair sprints or something like that. No, it's the <laughs> product goal. So and one objective at a time. So, and that's all also comes back in the product goal uh, part of the Scrum Guide that um, uh, there, there's very clear language about abandoning a goal before setting a new one or reaching it, mm. or reaching it and then abandoning it. Uh, uh, read it for yourself. But <laughs> and, and and that's uh, like that's really clear. There should not be multiple product goals. Your product goals should not be like a goal roadmap that is. Uh, uh, then fixed and committed to by the team or whatever. There's one goal we're working towards for the product. And okay, we, yeah, we, we can adapt to change, you know? uh, but then we, if we change the product goal, then there is a new product goal and the old one just goes away. Simple. 
Steve, Steve's just turned into a troll. I don't like. I don't. I'm don't not. I haven't uh, turned into a troll. Just, I'm just. I'm just <laughs> sat listening to Shaw there, thinking, "Wow, that actually is a not wow." I always sit there and think, "Wow, with Shaw." Um, but how powerful um, that that statement, that first opening statement, is. Yep. You know, and I've read this quite a few times uh, and walking through it, and you go, oh, okay, that's fine, that's fine. But phrasing that question, it's like, no, it's there. It's one clear goal, one cohesive team. It's it, You cannot get any clearer. However, in the conversations I'm already having in my head with other clients, it's like, yeah, but we're slightly different. And I can see this is where now the scrum master, and it's coming back to the first point, is the scrum master is going to have to really help those organizations understand how to work in scrum, how to get the benefits and what may need to change yep. and how that's going to happen. So I, I think it's a really exciting time. Yep. Yes. Oh, the, the, the scrum master role is, uh, I think I, I'm really hoping, <laughs> I'm really hoping a lot of scrum masters read this and go, Oh my God. <laughs> you know, mm. uh, in a nice way. Yeah, 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 from a really good way. It's like, I think this is really powerful and empowering for yes. Scrum Masters now. Um, yeah. You know, I think I think the Scrum Masters can now hold organizations accountable and say, look, if you really want to do Scrum properly, this is what you need to do, All right? Let's, let's go and create me a team, All right? Let's get a, a, a product owner uh, accountability that creates a product goal. Let's have that. You know, if you want to do Scrum properly, we, this is what we need. Um, you know, it's and it's there and it's clear and it's not uh, not obfuscated, obs you know what I mean, like you know, hidden within you know a whole load of other language. Um, uh, you know, I think I think it's kind of really cool for me. Yeah, I also I also think that um, because I hear you say, Andy, like if we want to do Scrum properly, I I come across a lot of organizations that do not have that goal. You know, they and maybe you know rightfully not having scrum as a silver bullet or or as a um uh you know it's a means to an end uh but it creates a better means now and more you know more more clarity and more space to uh to execute on um in in a manner that that it that fits organizations as well mm. i think you still you know you still need to change you still need to change things uh, to get the benefits um, and, and the scrum master to, to help explain and make those benefits transparent to, to, to the organization is really important. See something, something you just said, I kind of, I was like really thinking, I wonder actually, you know, how many, how many um, organizations that, that start using scrum as a way of, way of delivering, you know, value change actually take it seriously. Hmm. actually have like you know uh, kind of not just like yeah 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 we'll do scrum but actually like really i don't know I, 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 and you know until I, it's pointed out to them you know it's like you're not i don't think they do i honestly don't think they do i think they think oh, okay this is the latest well it's not the latest it's been around for a long time it's agile training it's okay. this is the way that we're going forward hey we have to do this because x is doing it what are, i'm not bothered so i think the real thing that scrum master should be saying is when do you want to get your benefits sooner? When do you want to actually start reaping the benefit of all the work that you're doing and the value that you're putting in? The way to do this is by having one cohesive team focusing on one product. Yes. And, and so you use the word scrum, right? Because uh, why should organizations want scrum? They don't want scrum. They want better business results. And scrum is just a way to get it. So organizations don't want to do good scrum. They want better business results, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and more the, flow. Sorry? <laughs> more, flow. more flow. And more flow. And no, more, they flow. Yes. more flow. They want better business results. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I will not start beatboxing now, but that's what I have in my head. <laughs> anyway. Um, but the thing is, uh, organizations want to deliver products that are valuable, that are in an effective way. And Scrum can help do that. And I think the new Scrum... Uh, guide description can help scrum masters um, better explain it and better coach it so that that will be powerful um, i want to highlight a, a very small thing before we move to the next topic um, but it's related to the product goal because in the section for the product goal there's also something that was not in the scrum guide before that is not really about the product goal but it's about part of the product goal and that is the product because right 
now in the uh, old scrum guide that everybody has read i hope <laughs> there's no description of what is a product and now in the product goal section there's a description of a product and i think that's also very powerful and uh, it talks about how a product should deliver value and who it should deliver value for and stuff like that and and um, that's uh, just a really small change because it's just one sentence but it's Change, changes so much for the guide, I think, that now uh, the product has a description in there. Uh, so yeah, I just want to highlight that because Goodness, it always yeah. comes up in uh, uh, classes and teams like us, like, what is our product? Well, let's read the guide and then we can talk more about it because that's a really good place to start. Um, but there's a lot of more changed and there's some important changes. Um, for instance, um, in the past, we always talked about self-organizing teams. In the past, Scrum Guide, the 2017. <laughs> I still talk about self-organizing teams. <laughs> yes. But now the language has changed in the Scrum Guide to self-managing. So what does this mean to you? Everyone's silent. That's weird. Yeah. I was, I was going to jump in. Yeah. Uh, like, what, so, the, so the language is, the language has changed to self-managing. And... and do you know what I, I thought was really interesting? Um, uh, the um, uh, Barry and Christian put out the oh that that really inflammatory LinkedIn and bl a blog post about um, can a Scrum Master remove somebody from the Scrum <laughs> team? Do you remember that? And that, that yeah. like really kicked off. Uh, there was like two of, years ago. It was a couple yeah. of years ago. And and uh, you know, the, in conclusion, yes. Uh, and when this change came through, sorry, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you read that I thought you were gonna, we're gonna do your three rules of Andy, I think. Yeah, yeah. sorry, um, uh, can they, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but spoiler alert, they, they can. Uh, but this goes back to this point, right? So, and, and that's why I really found this interesting when this came up, this kind of like, so previously it was self-organizing and uh, it was a, like a, a hint. It was a hint at self-managing, right? It, it was a forgiving hint. Uh, we would like people to be kind of more brutal to each other, you know, and actually have choice. Um, but now, now this does open that door, right? And and manage like this 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 concept of self-managing does open that door, right? Can they can they hire and fire? Yeah, the, I, I get what you mean. And uh, yet, um, I believe the change also means that uh, it should be more apparent that not just the who, uh, the, the hire and fire, and the how uh, is um, up to the team itself, but also the what. So um, making the product owner part of the, uh, the team, not a separate role, uh, and changing this language to self-managing they're not just organizing in the direction that they get thrust upon them by the wider organization, but they're really self-managing in with respect to the value they deliver, the choices they make, the way they do it. And it, it it's, it's become larger. I think this, this also relates again, back to that whole team aspect, right? Yes. Having a scrum team being uh, accountable and self-managing is, uh, you know, yeah, I used to explain it like, you could you could say the scrum team is self management uh, because you know the product owner guides you know gives guidance to the what and the development team decides on the how and you know which creates sort of this separation again so and now you just have this one team accountable for for that product um, so again you know this is just clear language around that topic. See <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I, I just I wonder how how this you know how this relates to practice. You know, people practicing Scrum in um, in 2017 version versus 2020. What what changes in this respect? I mean, this is this is for me where it's going to come back to how yeah, you know, this is theory versus practice mm -hmm. now and and. Um, you know, like with any change, there'll be, there'll be a slow shift. Um, I, my hope is a lot of people read this and change happens, you know, not, you know, not immediately. There might be some reactionary and I'd love to see that a little bit more, but I think, um, 
it's you know as trainers we all recognize those moments where you get people come into the class and they come up they come in and then they go away you get like i don't know whether you guys like when when we open up is you know what do you what do you know already and then they'll throw all the words on the wall and you just go brilliant you're experts right now now walk out the room okay you know you don't need you know and then by the end of the by the end of two days they walk away going okay i really didn't know scrum I know I know to come two days and they've learned nothing. I don't mean that. Uh, they, they come out of the room and they really that like the knowledge that they walked in with is very different to the one they walk out with, right? And and they're going away going, we really know Scrum. And I think it, it paints a picture for me that a lot of people go blindly into it with with zero training or or other people's experience and implementation of what scrum looks like and they come out with varying different degrees of success right and some people go yeah i loved it some people go oh it was terrible because it was you know death by daily stand up you know and um you know you see kind of varying degrees of that and I, and again it's kind of uh, i would like people to take this change very seriously i would like but we we can't enforce it um but i would hope that for me this this a lot of these changes inspire people to, to think about how they're using Scrum at the moment. Um, uh, I guess I would also encourage a lot, you know, a load of Scrum masters to go and pick this up and, and challenge themselves and their organizations that they're working with, because that's the only way it's going to actually affect any change is to roll that back up. Kind of, I know it's kind of a long answer to your, your, your point, but I think a lot of what I see is, is not, not team level. It's not developer level. It is, organizational level and how they treat this as a change enabler yeah well, uh, i also sorry Sean. yeah add a small thing and then i'll uh, boot it over to you steve um because one thing you said about training made me think this may be the the most important change to the scrum guide and it's something you said before steve so um just putting those two things together um the new scrum guide um has a lot more clarity around the purpose of the uh, the stuff that's in it. Like everything, uh, every uh, um, uh, heading in the first sentence of it is, describes a purpose much clearer than before where it was a bit muddied, some, sometimes buried inside or in the, the, the last paragraph of a, of a part or whatever. So uh, knowing the purpose of stuff, that's also the, the biggest win I think people get from attending a training with one of us or one of our colleagues, right? So we uh, we tend to focus very much on the purpose of stuff so people can uh, like uh, uh, survive in, <laughs> in their organizations where they encounter all different kinds of stuff, even stuff that we couldn't talk about in the training because every situation is different. Um, so, so I think that's a big plus for the new guide. And um, yeah, I, I really like that. Um, Steve. Yeah, I was just picking up and very quickly, um, you know, the self-managing stuff. I, I, this is where Scrum Master should really delve back into the Scrum values and make sure the team understand the Scrum values. Because if you're self-managing and self-organizing and you're not sure of it, you're going to hopefully be falling back onto those values um, just to allow that team to self-manage. You know, for, for example, the courage to speak up and be open about issues that are going on. I, I've worked with teams that this wouldn't say boo to a goose, but everybody else knows that there's a problem here that needs solving, that needs managing. Mm. Oh, that's not my role. That's so-and-so's role. That's, you know, well, no, it's not, you know, it's commitment to the team, commitment to being professional, commitment to doing the best job you can, courage to speak up when things aren't right, courage to ask when things are wrong, self-managing. So, hey, scrum masters, dust off your scrum values, uh, retrospectives, because the teams are going to need those. Yeah. So. Yeah, but this means something for, for developers as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody needs to step up sort of here. You know, it's it's sort of like also a bit tougher language, maybe. Yeah. Like Self-management, you know, it's more it's more bold. So treating yeah. people as adults. Right. Treating people as adults. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You're not good. We're not going to spoon feed you anymore. Andy, you know, manage. Come on, step up. People as adults, should we? Can we? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the right thing to do? Can, can you? It's optional, right? What? What? What do you? What's your? You know? You know? For everything in life is everything in life is an option. You know and. Yeah. and you and know, success yeah, is choice yeah exactly right you'll only find out how well it went after the after the fact you know and um 
I think I think there's there's the you know I, I think this is what this guy does for me is is it takes a load of that kind of um, uh, implied you know um, almost almost you know to the three topics in the daily scrum right you know it takes that all away and just says look um, there's a load of interpretation in this stuff but you know there's still a good grounding that you need to impl- you need to put in place to make this you know. Um, uh, to make this work for the for the best of you and your team, your organization. And I think the, the sooner people wake up and really kind of start to embrace this and take it seriously, and this is like the professional side of it, but I don't know, it's just, it just feels it's a really good opportunity for a, for a refresh for, for scrum masters, for, for teams to really pick it up and, and do something better, you know, get rid of the, uh, dust, you know, dust off the, you know, the old 2017 look and like go fresh for 2020, you know. Um, it's the latest model. It's the, it's the, it's the socially distanced version. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the Corona safe version. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that kind of uh, feels like a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice closing uh, monologue. Um, but to really close off, I want to propose to do a round of uh, what's the change in the Scrum Guide that you hope makes the biggest impact in practice? Because we've been talking about, okay, how does it affect practice? So I want to give each of you um, some time to uh, pick out a change. And if you have the same change, just add to the previous uh, person's thing and see what happens. Steve's, uh, so the guide. The, Steve's gone for the guide. Yes. yes. <laughs> gone for the guide because the, the, there's so many. Hoping makes the biggest impact in practice to uh, Scrum Team's success, happiness, effectiveness, whatever your explanation or ambition is uh, for, for, for the world. Make it big. Go big or go home. Uh. Then we go home. Oh, we're, we're already home. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, let's go, so... Let's go first. Jasper, are you, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You, you saw me see. Yeah, right. I see. I'm yeah. ready. Go for it. Um, yeah, I would. I really, I'm really going for the commitments. So I really like the fact that it's it feels complete, right? Um, it feels in place. Like there were a couple of things out of place, and this is just more natural. Um, uh, it's it it closes it. You know, it closes it off. Um, uh, so yeah, that, for me, that is very. You know, and then I got, you know, be, because I chose commitments, I tick a lot of the boxes at once. <laughs> okay, we're done. Stop the recording. Yeah. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic, yeah. <laughs> Perfect score. Now, thank you, uh, Jasper, and uh, also for keeping it short. Do that. <laughs> Steve, you want to go? go? You go. Me go okay. I'm I, see that's the evil because I'm like torn between two. For me, um, uh, I want to say done. Read the done thing, right? Read it. It's really important. Um, uh, but for me, it's the team. There's this kind of scrum team as a definition. You know, it's game over for me. It's 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 all good. Create that. You know, one unit focus value flow flow. You know, you're all good. Get it in there. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm reading a menu going, oh, that looks good, that looks good. And I read things that I've highlighted, but it comes down to the, a cohesive unit of professionals focus on one objective at a time. It's like, bang, yes, professionals, cohesive, working together, one objective. Mm. Oh, nice. I'll have that, please. Cool. Thank you for not letting me be the only one quoting the guide in this uh, episode. It's uh, <laughs> virtual fist bump. Uh, you're on this side. No, we, we can, you know. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, for me, um, it's not someone has to say it. I mean, it's the product goal. I, I hope the product goal um, gives Scrum finally its deserved uh, legitimacy as a product development uh, framework and uh, f- we can finally just stop discussing, ah, we have product owners and product managers and uh, how does it go? Who, who serves who? Uh, who has the, the final say? And so, no, we have a product goal. We have a, a, a value we deliver. Uh, the backlog is ordered to reach this goal and, and we're sprinting and we have sprint goals that are steps towards this goal. It's, it's, that's the one I hope gets picked up and people do it more. Uh, I already hope they do it now more. <laughs> <laughs> now I have the scrum guides to, to, to like, product call, it's in there. 
Okay. I think it's going to bring a lot, you know, to the community. Uh, not not necessarily this conversation, but you know, this this new version. And uh, I think we're going to, you know, be a lot more, even more impactful in organizations if we if we you know take these changes and uh, put them into practice. Right. Yes. To round off and um, keep ourselves in the illusion that people have listened or watched until this point, um, where can people find more if they're not done yet with what they're saying here? I mean, uh, Jasper, where can they find more about us uh, if they want to go to a training or? Yeah, of course, you can go to scrumfacilitators.nl or .com um, and you can find, uh, find us at Meetup as well. So we uh, host some meetups every now and then and of course you know in the scrum community scrum.org find your resources there very valuable yeah resources by us four and a lot of more people writing about scrum right yeah. scrum.org also to book trainings by the way yeah so steve where can people find you uh usual places linkedin um theagiletrainer.com, Twitter. <clears throat> also, uh, Andy and I run a, a meetup in the UK called the Scrum Coaches. Uh, so we tend to do one every month, every six weeks or so. Um, so it's a really safe place, a really nice place to come and talk about Scrum with other practitioners. So Nice one. Andy? Yeah, I was going to say we, we are we are building the Scrum coaches at a very slow rate. The 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 <laughs> seems the Scrum slow long. coaches. <laughs> it's 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 a very long sprint um, that's been going on for, time, for, really. for about, a, about a year. But uh, but yeah, so the Scrum coaches um, dot com, uh, you can uh, or Agile Rocks dot uh, co um, kind of my home. But yeah, YouTube. I haven't got a slick link for YouTube yet. I'm working on that. Um, uh, but YouTube, you can you can Google Agile Rocks or Andy Hiles or Steve Traps, and uh, you know our faces will come up. Um, yeah, and then LinkedIn, uh, Scrum.org, kind of the usual the usual hangouts for us. Um, I was going to say, all you know, the Scrum Guides is where you'll find a copy of the new Scrum Guide that we've all been talking about. Um, you know, in case you are confused after however many <laughs> minutes we've been talking. Um, yes, uh, but you know, it's cool. Thank you, Andy. Yes, of course, scrumguides.org is the most important uh, URL to, uh, to drop here. Um, but uh, um, for me, you can also find me on, uh, on Twitter at uh, shortly, uh, shortly.com and um, uh, Scrum Facilitates with Jasper and Scrum.org. There's also stuff linked in. Uh, feel free to connect, to ask questions, to interact, whatever you like. Like this video, if it's on YouTube, uh, press there. Uh, whatever. <laughs> he's always wanted to do that <laughs> yes yes i've never done that before so and uh if you want to book us for a talk or a panel discussion on the new scrum guide for your uh, virtual event please do so we're the, f the four grumpy pscs uh, <laughs> <laughs> to I the think... url <laughs> maybe that website's still available yeah. the four grumpy PSTs. I i'd imagine it's, boys. it's a unique market <laughs>